Okay, everybody. Um, the following is a video of me doing the strut to coilover change on my 2009 Dodge Avenger. Um, after I had the videos done and I uploaded it to YouTube, there was a problem. And I didn't realize that there was an error while uploading, so I deleted everything off my phone. Including the, all the clips that I edited together because I needed to make space. Then what happened was I realized that it didn't upload to YouTube and I had to go through my recycle bin in my Samsung Cloud to find the clips. Um, so I put them back together. Um, there's like two or three clips that are missing. Um, it's nothing too serious and it's mostly near the end. Um, so the disassembly is more or less complete and the assembly, installing the front struts is like 99% there. The only thing that's missing is a clip that actually shows me tightening up the bolt for the uh, front sway bar link. And then in the rear, there's um, a clip or two missing um, where I'm attaching, like where I'm actually putting the strut back into the, into the cavity. Um, other than that, I'd say it's about 95% uh, complete and I hope that you, uh, you enjoy. Hey everybody, it's James the Man's Man, and as I promised, we were gonna be taking the factory struts off of my 09 Dodge Avenger and replacing them with Megan Racing coilovers. Now, I just took the front strut off of the driver's side, and I thought if I did that first, I could work out any hiccups I have, since I've never done this before, and I could talk to you with confidence on the passenger side on what I'm doing. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove using a 15, no, a 14 millimeter um, impact socket on an extension. The sway bar link. And it is located right here. Then I'm gonna drop down to a 13 mil and I'm gonna take off the nut here that holds the brake line to the strut tower. Then using um, a 21 mil on here. On the other side, I couldn't use the impact gun. I had to break it loose with a uh, breaker bar first and I really had to lean into it. But after I got some movement on it, I switched to the gun and I put a wrench on that side and I had her zipped off in, no t in what seemed like no time, but in reality, what was an hour of just trial and error, like the first time I just did a straight impact and I let the uh, the tank run dry actually. I have a, quite a small uh, compressor, I have a five gallon, however it's a two horsepower motor so it's rated for impact use. But we're just gonna line up here, I can get that to catch, in there and let's let her go. <coughs> Got it off. Got it off clean too on the first try. So we can push that out of the way. We can inspect these while we're at it. There's a little play in those. Um, if it was in the budget, I'd change those out, but I'm a little broke right now after spending money on these coilovers. All right, now I've switched up uh, sizes and I'm gonna go here. And I'm going to take off the bracket that holds the brake line to the strut. Okay, now that that's out of the way. My next task is to remove these. So I have a long ratchet. Uh, first I grabbed a breaker bar, but I wasn't able to make the angle for the bottom bolt. So I grabbed my longest ratchet and uh, righty tighty lefty loosey. So on the other side, I was able to push down on this side. I have to stand up with it and I'm actually going to put the phone down uh, while I'm record. I'm going to pause this recording because I'm going to need both hands for this. Okay. Now after giving myself a slight hernia, I was able to turn both those bolts loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the gun here and then I'm going to put a wrench here and I'm using a 13 16 on this side because um, I don't have another 21 
because this I'm using a metric 21 here, and I'm using a 1316 on this side. And it is close enough. So uh, this needs two hands, but that's what the procedure is, is I'm gonna hold that wrench, and I'm gonna put this here. And the reason that I'm doing that is to stop that bolt from, uh, from to stop the bolt from just spinning. What's gonna happen is, is that this nut is gonna travel up and travel off. Okay, so after I got them all the way to the end, and you'll know that these aren't coming out, like they're basically stuck in place. So I got these to the end, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a couple wax with a hammer. Um, I've seen other videos where they've had mallets and stuff, which, you know, this is what I got. This is what I'm gonna use. And to increase my striking force, I'm gonna hit it sideways. On the other side, I was at this for probably about 10 minutes. So um, this is basically the procedure. And I'm going to uh, put the camera down now, use both hands, and I'm gonna whack these out. Okay, after a couple minutes of hitting, and what I did do was, um, I had some WD-40, not sure if it made much of a difference, but I sprayed some in, and I, I waited about 30 seconds, and it whacked them through. Now, it's just regular WD-40, so maybe it was a placebo effect, and I thought it was going to do something, and it didn't. Maybe it did. Now I can take these off, and wrestle these out. That one's on there. So I'll just loosen this up. There. So it uh, looks like I need both hands for this, but basically I'm just gonna keep on twisting this. Oh, and what I did, just while I'm getting the nuts in and out, was I brought my jack under, and I jacked up the lower control arm. And this way, I wouldn't have uh, the weight of this pulling against the nuts and helping to jam them up. Okay, now, you can see I have the nuts out, nuts and bolts are out. There's nothing on the bottom holding this together. What's left are the bolts up here. Now, I recently watched a video from the Humble Mechanic where he talked about top five coilover um, tips. And what he said was, it's okay to use impact to take stuff apart you're never going to use again. When he was talking about these bolts. So I'm going to use my impact because these are my factory struts. They have 150,000 kilometers on them. They're going in the dumpster when I'm done. I will hand tighten these and I'll use a torque wrench when I put the new ones on. Okay, now that I've waited for the compressor to catch up, this is the last bolt. There's only three that hold it on. So I'm going to loosen it up, and then I'm going to have to put the camera down, because the strut will just fall, and I don't want it tearing the uh, CV boot or anything like that. So what I'll do is, after I get it loose, I will uh, put my hand under there, and I'll catch it. As a, like, I'll put my hand under there and grab it so it doesn't fall freely. Okay, and now I have out my old, worn-out strut and we'll lay it down on the ground and we'll compare it to a brand new one so you can see that already the car is going to be at least an inch lower i've got my mount here for my brake line and I got my mount here for my uh, sway bar. It looks a little higher than that one. And in another uh, video I watched the other day on how to do these, what they said was, when you do these, you can put these in one at a time. I chose to take them both out at the same time. But don't attach the sway bar until you're finished both of them. Otherwise, you're going to put too much pressure on the sway bar when it's still attached to one, and it's not going to want to come off the second one very easily. So unhook both sway bars. Unhook your sway bar end links. Uh, before you start, and then they're the last thing they go back on. Uh, you can also notice here that the old coil is big and fat and wide. The new one is nice and tight. The boot 
is all flimsy. The boot is all nice. This is old and rusty. This isn't. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tackle the uh, rear side. I'm going to pull all four out before I do anything. And after I pull all four out, I'm going to come in here with some rust spray paint and I'm going to spray the control arms. And on the other side, I actually have to change the battery today too. So I'm going to pull the liner out there and I'm going to put the battery in on the driver's side because it goes behind the wheel well. Basically this spot on the driver's side. Okay, as we can see, I was able to get it out on the passenger side. I still have to do the driver's side. So it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. And part of it is, is not knowing what I'm doing too much other than I have a Haynes manual to follow. And what it said was to take the two bolts off on the inside, take that bolt off and then pull it out. But what happens though, is when you take the tension off of that bolt, see, I didn't, I didn't realize when you do the front, things tend to drop. When you do the back, things tend to raise. So this springed up and this kind of caught me in the chin a bit. No big deal. But the only way I was able to get a, uh, you put a pry bar here and yanked on it. But I had to take the control arm off here in order to get enough play to yank it enough to get the uh, strut to fall out. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna go over the procedure on what you should do. And we're gonna start with a, 15 mil ratcheting wrench. We're gonna crawl into the car. Oh. <clears throat> and I did the hard side first because I had a sub in the way I had to move. This side is actually pretty easy to get to with nothing in the way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the wrench on here and Oh, I'm gonna put the wrench on here. I'm gonna set the phone down for a second while I crack this with both hands. And all I'm gonna do is loosen this up all the way. So I don't think I need to show you this. I'm gonna pause the recording and I'll get back to you after. Okay, I got the far bolt, I have the far bolt off and to be honest, I did use the ratcheting wrench to break it loose and I used the ratcheting wrench on the other side. But on this side, I thought, you know what? I got air tools. Some of you don't, so that's why I wanted to show that you could start it with this. But I got an air ratchet right here. So let's just hook this up. Now, the only problem that I don't like using these when I shoot the videos is that uh, two seconds into squeezing the trigger, the compressor fired up and it's pretty loud. <laughs> So now what the Haynes manual says to do is to undo this bolt and then remove the strut. So what I'm going to try doing first though, because I know once I remove this bolt, the tension's going to, this is gonna, this is under tension from the frame and this is going to lift up. So I'm going to try and see if I can lower it with this pry bar and see if I can pull the strut out. So I'm going to set the phone down because I'm going to need two hands for this and we'll see if that works. Nope. So I'm gonna do what I did last time, except a little bit differently. Last time I I took this off and then everything kind of lifted. I think I'm gonna start here this time. I'm gonna remove this. Um, and just so you know, on the back end of the car, it's still a 15 millimeter bolt uh, that holds the struts in place to the body up top, just as in the front. However, in the front, it was 21 millimeter uh, down here. Uh, however, these are both here and here are 18 millimeter. Now my impact set doesn't have an 18 millimeter. So I'm using a three quarter on the impact and I'm using an 18 mil wrench uh, to kind of hold that steady. It's gonna be the same type procedure where we put a wrench on to hold it and then we put the gun on to zap her out. So I'm gonna put this on, I'm gonna pause this while I do it so I can use both hands. The thing that I've noticed in the back, however, is that everything's not as seized as it was in the front. So it's actually walking out on its own. I'm not going to have to hammer it out. Uh, 
Uh, one other thing I'm going to do is I put it on a swivel for the back. And the reason why is so I can get in here and I can clear everything. Now you might say, but why don't you put the gun on that end? And that's because when I did it on this end on the other side, the bolt locked itself out and I didn't have to hit it out. If I do it on this end with the impact, I'm just going to take that nut off and then I might have to hammer the bolt out. So I'm going to put a, my wrench on here. And then I'm going to put the impact gun on that side. I'm going to use uh, two hands, one here and one on the gun, and I'm going to let it go. And last time when I did this, it was, this was still attached, so everything lifted up. I'm not sure if it's going to lift up with the same force, but as the bolt's coming out, I'm going to make sure I clear myself so I don't catch that in the face again. And it, I didn't catch it hard. It was just a quick little uh, jab on my chin, and I was actually uh, pulling away when it happened anyways. So I think I might have lost a clip. Um, an editing clip here and before I get everything back together I'm going to walk you through a little bit. <clears throat> now imagine that that's the factory strut. It's an 18 millimeter down there. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your 18 millimeter on and what's actually different between the front and the back is that that's just a straight through bolt. So as you back it off it's actually going to unthread itself and come out. Now I know the next clip I have it catches up where I talk about the spring tension in this releasing and it catching my finger um, because this is supposed to be quite a bit lower and now I have the bolt partially in. Um, I also I removed this first this time uh, just because I knew from when I tried the other side first <clears throat> I uh, did this second because I wasn't able to pry it down deep enough. Um, so now for this reassemble so the bolt so the bolt came out and this dropped. You can see it dropped quite a bit and this is how free it is here. Now when the bolt came out though, it didn't truly really come out. What happened was is it got caught up on an angle like this. So uh, I whacked it, kind of just took this and I just kind of gave it a quick tap and then everything shot up and uh, caught me in the finger this time. So uh, when it's just hanging on, I would reach in with a pry bar and give it a poke from a safe distance. So next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pry bar here. Okay, I'm going to put my pry bar under here, and I'm going to drop this until I can get that free. And I'm going to pull that out. There's going to be two hands again. So I'm going to, I gave you the gist of it, and now I'm going to give it a try. There, got it out. And that's all I needed was to just bend it down with this, with one hand, while resting it out with the other hand. And this is about a two foot pry bar. So now let's grab a, let's compare that. Actually we'll compare it on the other side because it's closer. So let's grab a rear. Now I'm not sure if the rears have have sides because nothing really hooks up to them. But we have side by side we can see that they both have their bolts up here. Coil springs. These ones are again fatter, wider. These ones are tied tighter. Now the kit said one to four inch drop, so I haven't played with this lengthening yet. So I'm not sure if, because that appears to be about an inch, so I'm not sure if that's as low as it goes or not. We'll find out uh, when we put it on. So now that I have everything off, all we have to do now is put everything back on in reverse order. Okay, now that we have the disassembly complete, it's time for installation. Now, like I did on the other uh, video, other half of this video, I installed the passenger side first. That way I could get over any hiccups while I record this. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is take some anti-seize. And you're gonna wanna coat these to stop it from seizing and binding up later. So that's what I'm gonna do. It doesn't need to be caked on. The thing is, is I'm in Canada, it's winter. I'm gonna have snow and salt on the roads to deal with 
Well, maybe not. It's January, and I live in the south, so um, southwestern Ontario. So we just had a big thaw, and we might be good for the year. And we might get another snowstorm. Who knows? So now that this part's done, and I have the bolts off on the top, I'm going to fish this through this through up here. I'm going to put a nut on. So basically, I'm going to take it. I'm going to go up here till it till it seats in, and then I'm going to reach on top with a nut. I'm going to need both hands for this, so I'm going to set the phone down. So I got the three bolts in. Um, they're hand tight. The manual said you can torque them now, but I'm going to wait till I get the uh, the knuckle in. So what I did was I put my jack under the knuckle and I jacked it up so that way I could get the bolt holes to line up. So I'm going to install this bolt in there and this one in here. Assuming I can get this to wiggle up there. Why is that not? Oh, it's out just a bit. So I'm going to put the phone down while I figure that out. Okay, so you're going to notice that they don't go in all the way. They're stuck here. And we're going to put our ends on. Our nuts right here. Over our bolts. And what's going to happen is, is as this gets tightened, and I'm going to tighten this by hand with a ratchet, it's going to pull this in. Then I'm going to torque it. The uh, torque for this, I believe, is 103 foot-pounds. And up top, I believe, is 44. So I'm going to grab my ratchet uh, up on the front here. This is a 21, so I'm going to put a 21 mil ratchet on, and I'm going to start tightening these till they're tight, and then I'm going to grab my torque wrench and torque them up. Okay, now that I got them in by hand, what we're going to do is we're going to take the torque wrench, and I have it set to 103 foot-pounds. I will put the torque wrench in successfully this time. There we go. One, you hear that click? 103 foot pounds. And now, all that's left is to attach this at 17 foot pounds and then our sway, sway bar links. Now, uh, the other side is pooched, so I'm gonna change these out actually. So basically for this brake line, there's a hole, there's a threaded hole here on the strut and then there's another clip for that, a hole for that clip, and that's gonna go in there. Then I've got this 13 millimeter bolt. It's gonna go on. We're gonna hand tighten that up, nice and snug. Well, as snug as we're gonna get hand tight. We're gonna put this 13 on this extension. And now I'm gonna put that on my torque wrench. I'm not going to drop this one. And we're going to get that down to 17 foot pounds. Okay, I'm going to put the phone down because it's just about to click and I can't quite do it. Okay, for the final piece, what we would do is we'd put this in here. Finagle that in. We put our nut on it and we tighten that down all the way. And uh, we would torque that to spec. However, we're going to be changing these out. So we're not going to put that in. What we're going to do is we're going to get back here with a wrench and we're going to take that nut off back there and pull the whole thing out. Bitch, told me they were greasable. Okay. 
All right, so the very first thing that you're gonna do is if you notice how the strut tower assembly or mount or whatever is made, is you're not gonna be able to access your damping mean controls on the strut tower without this. So what we're gonna do <coughs> is on this cable, there are two spots here for Allen uh, key adjustment. So we're gonna use the uh, provided Allen we're going to remove this, we're going to fish this cable through there, then we'll reattach this. Then what that will allow us to do <clears throat> Okay, now for reassembly, what I'm going to do is I got an 18 millimeter socket here and I'm going to put that on there. And I'm just going to start threading it in, and it's going to come through. It's going to walk itself in, and then I'm going to screw the uh, nut on tight, and then I'm going to torque it to 103 foot-pounds. Now that I have that bolt on tight, well, tight-ish, I'll get my torque wrench in here. I'm going to wobble that on there, and what I'll do on the other side is I'll put this wrench on here and using two hands, one on each tool, I'll tighten it till I get that click. Okay, now that I have it snugged up, I'm gonna put a wrench here and then I'm gonna put a torque wrench on the other side and I'm gonna tighten that up to 77 foot-pounds. Okay, with the last bolt on, all that's left is to let the jack stand off that I was using to hold the suspension in place to get that attached. And I have one confession to make to everybody. I lied to you all when I thought this would work. I had to take them out because actually the hole that I chose to run them through the trunk uh, was actually lower than the top, so they bound up and wouldn't work. So I had to drop everything again and then I took a guess, I set the dampening control to 20. Isn't that right, Gray Gray? All right, so all that I have to do left is put the uh, last tire on and then take her for an alignment.